redshirt junior out of Council Bluffs, Iowa, 28 and one this season. He was 22 and 0 before his only loss. It came to the guy he's about to face again, Nico Megalutis, the four-time All-American for Penn State. The big storyline for Nico Megalutis, redshirted last season, part of the Kale Sanderson plan to load up for a national title run, and Megalutis has been a big part of it. This will be meeting number three all time. Megalutis has won both matchups prior. Well, it's going to be really interesting because they know each other. Gilman, he needs to blow through those hands, and Megalutis, he's just got to find a way to win because he's been here three times and he's got a heart of a champion and he doesn't want to walk away without a championship. But Gilman is so athletic, so powerful, and he needs to use that and let it fly. Mike Haggerty's our lead official and off we go. First of 10 national championship bouts and Gilman and Megalutis round three between the two all time. For those of you getting oriented with our coverage this weekend, bottom left corner you have our scoreboard. The red marks next to the athletes' names indicates the ankle band color that they are sporting in this match. You'll see that all night. And of course, we'll pop up whatever ends up happening in this match in the particular color of the athlete that performs what has been executed on the floor. Already great pace here, and here's about uh, Thomas Gilman letting it all hang out. He's so athletic, he's got so much power, and he needs to blow through. But Nico Megalutas needs to find the angles. He can't go straight on and expect to score against Gilman, so he's got to find angles and create to score. Nico Megalutas, Anthony, is a guy who likes to be aggressive, but he took that red shirt year to try to fine tune his performance. These guys are really, really athletic and flexible. Well, absolutely. Megalutas, I really was impressed with the semifinals match. He really pressed the action right off the bat. He got two nice sweep singles at the beginning of the there to get, score an early lead. He needs to use that aggression tonight. Go off firing right at the beginning here. And I'm interested to see how it's going to work out. Gilman leads 125 pound division with 10 falls. Nico Megalutis has been pinned one time in his 138 match career, and that was all the way back in 2012. A really grinding Gilman on the bottom side of the chin of Nico Megalutis. That is a tough spot to be in right now. You can easily get worn down as we're halfway through the first. Usually guys don't like to be underneath that front heckler position. Megalutis, he's so tough. He's flexible like you just mentioned. You see right there, he clamps onto that elbow. It's so tight, so tough if you're the top guy to do any offense because if you don't have your elbow locked there, you have no space to move. Both of these guys, heavy-handed, 125-pounders. This ball's on both sides. Gilman, a two-time All-American now, 28-1. Megalutis is 31-3. and He's the only class without a top-seeded wrestler still in the bracket. Because yesterday, Thomas Gilman was able to get a full pin of Nathan Tomasello of Ohio State, the defending national champion at 125 pounds. Trying to get in on that leg, get around the neck. That's Gilman. That's exactly what Gilman needed to do. He found the angle right here, looking for that. Looks like if, uh, if Mega Lewis can cast over and get right there, which he attempts to do here, right at the edge of the mat. And there's the takedown for Mega Lewis. How about that? Flurry right there. Great counter by Mega Lewis, and he had the, uh, the angle created for him by uh, Thomas what? Gilman because Gilman made a Two. nice shot there. Still inbounds on the edge of the mat. Final 15 seconds of this first period. Megalutis right. looks jacked up right now. We're in the hard way, guys. The one thing Thomas Gilman does not want to do is roll around with Megalutis. When he gets in the scramble, he is the best. Wiry is what Megalutis looks to me. He definitely is. He's so flexible. And the key for Thomas Gilman, that was a nice shot there, but he failed to finish quickly. That's what he needs to do against a guy like this. You get in those, those shots, finish quickly. No hesitation. You can't pause. You got to keep that penetration going all the way through to avoid those scramble situations. The heavy-handed Megalutis keeping control of the Gilman ankle to ride out the rest of the period. This was the takedown, Anthony. See, Gilman with the initial shot, just beautiful job there. But Megalutis grabbing that ankle, he kept control of it. He elevated it up here. Nice power here with that back arch through. Went all the way through, ended up on top in the half. Just nice job with that floor, he ended up on top. You're seeing things that nobody else does. Who else does things like that than Megalutis? 
Gilman chose bottom. He's going to try to escape here from Megalutis. You'll notice the riding time in red, so you'll be able to keep track on our scoreboard of the riding time for the entirety of the match. If it's in green, obviously it's in favor of the wrestler with the green ankle band, red for red. There's the escape point right near the edge of the mat. Good savvy that time by Gilman, and out of bounds they go. Excellent job by Gilman. He, he got back in physically. Now he needs to stay sharp mentally. Obviously, this is pretty common to wrestling fans, individual scoring. But again, this season, the change in the scorebook, near fall points, it's no longer two and three. It's now two for a two count and four for a four count. Really encourages top wrestling because you can get ex uh, offensive wrestlers can really get points fast. Absolutely. And I love that rule. I wish I had done it a couple years earlier. But it really promotes that top wrestling, not just the riding, which you see a lot. Guys just kind of holding on, trying to get that back. Point. But now they're going for the big ones. And Megalutis gets another takedown. He's already got two in this match already. Never has he lost to Gilman in two previous tries. Gilman trying to get to his belly and avoid getting to his back. Megalutis elevating his game. He's doing things he needed to do right there. A little duck under because he found the angle, created it when Thomas Gilman was coming in. Great job of finding the angle. Nico Megaluda said that he wanted to be better scoring from multiple positions. Obviously, very aggressive, very good from his feet, but he had to be better on top. So far, he's been solid. Gilman trying to get the hips out, and very close. Stall call. Okay, so he got the call stall, Megalutis did, because he was below the hips for five counts. You can't do that. You have to improve your position back up above the hips when you are on an opponent's leg, as you look at Kale Sanderson, the outstanding head coach of the Nittany Lions. And really right there, that Megalutis, he had to give up that stall call or risk giving up the two-point reversal. So, I mean, that's the only thing you can do in that position. Smart wrestling, you have to give it up sometimes to avoid giving up the big points. Great job by Gilman right there of getting him off the ankles, getting Megalutis off his ankle. He was able to stand up, face him, and get the one-point escape. 25 seconds to go, second period. A good ride by Megalutis throughout a majority of this second, but a good escape by Gilman to get back within two. And there he goes right back under the chin of Megalutis. But as Anthony mentioned, Megalutis can still do things from this position. We'll call the stalemate and bring him back to center. Really right now, Gilman, he's still in a pretty good position. He still has the next period going in. The writing time's against him, but Meg Lutis has been warned for that stall call. So it's key to remember right here, he's got to just keep his composure. Doesn't have to rush anything too soon. There's plenty of time left in this match. Megalutis, the third time finalist. Gilman in the finals for the first time. Megalutis lost to Matt McDonough in 2012. And then lost to Jesse Delgado in 2013 in the finals. He finished third place in 2014 before taking the red shirt year. Megalutis with the escape. That's a big escape point early in the second. Doesn't have that riding time cut into at all. Now right here, if Gilman can keep from going ear to ear here, that's what Megalutis wants to do right here. But it also tells me Megalutis isn't on the attack like he was. There's two shots from Gilman right there. If he gets a couple more in, he could get a, call, a stall call right there because Megalutis is backing up. Megalutis can't stop attacking, but he has right now. Megalutis, one of the 63 qualifiers from the state of Pennsylvania. That's the most of any state represented here in the NCAA tournament in 2016. Gilman trying to get in on that ankle, trying to get in on that left side of Megalutis. That's five or six straight attacks by uh, Gilman right there. Megalutis trying to find the edge of the mat. Like it. Worried about getting tagged with a stall call here, too. That's another change that referees are trying to enforce. Edge of the mat. You have to continue action this year. Otherwise, referees will call you more often for stalling. They're trying to encourage offensive wrestling. Mike Haggerty, the head official there, says action. Megalutis has not taken a forward step in this period. And he's burying his head a little bit right now, too. 
So if I'm making this right now, I don't necessarily need to have to take some deep penetration shots. I just need to make an effort here, do some half shots, lower my level a little bit, level change, just to show the referee I'm working. Ready. He's not doing any of that. He's just kind of standing, holding on to his elbows. You see the stall call there. Yep, there's the stall call. So Gilman gets a point. Remember, Megalutis still has the riding time point locked right now. That could be a little too late. I think so, too. A little too late. Because if he gets tagged with another one, he'll lose a point, but he still has that riding time point intact. What's Gilman's go-to shot right now? He needs to, what, what he's got, he's got to show right now. He's going to need something big, something huge right now to win this thing. Megalutis is just trying to stay away. And he found a way. He's been waiting a long time for it, and finally, Nico Megalutis is a national champion. Dan and Linda Megalutis looking on. Nico has his hand raised. Third time's a charm for the Megalutis family to win their first national championship at 125 pounds. And you got the sense that Nico was gonna do whatever it takes tactically, tactically to make sure that he won this match. This is a huge takedown early on in that match. Megalutis in that scramble position ended up finding his way up on top. It's a nice job. He was early, aggressive early on in the match, kind of shut down later on, but he did what he needed to do to win. Great job. Let's check in with Quint with Nico. Nico, congratulations. You've been to this night before. What, what emotions were you dealing with when you took the mat tonight? Just want to win, man. Just want to win. What was most critical to those uh, two takedowns? I don't even remember, man. This interview probably stinks, but I, I don't know. My head's messed up, or I don't know. I'm in a what, what, where, where is your head? I saw a big, big hug for your assistant coach, and, and, and you salute the, you salute these fans. I want to see my see my parents, you know. I don't know, man. This is awesome. Go get him. Go see your parents, Nico. Congratulations. He redshirted a year to try to get better. Three times to the finals. And finally, Nico Megalutis, a national champion. is the sweetest one of all for Nico Megalutis in his outstanding Penn State career.